Okay, we're going to unlock the mysteries of the tone generator. I've already removed all of the wires here to make it easier to see and to enable me to disassemble it. This plate won't come off unless the wires are either cut or unsoldered. So, underneath that big felt pad, this is what you would see. Here's the funnels that the oil goes in. Taking this plate off reveals main part of the tone generator. This is the trough that retains the oil. Okay, underneath this copper strip reveals the trough. This is nothing more than something I assume that was to keep debris from falling down into the trough. As you can see, the trough has a big piece of cotton wicking material Underneath that reveals all of the wicks. These cotton wicks go through a little slot in the side of the trough and go down to the individual bearings. Capillary action will suck the oil out of the trough and draw it into the bearings. The bearings are made out of impregnated uh, uh, bronze it's actually a porous material, acts like a sponge. Capillary action sucks it out as the bearings heat up. It draws the oil into the pores of the bronze bushings and provides lubrication. So that's as simple as it is. Okay, here's a better shot of what the wicks look like. Again, underneath this piece of canvas looking material all of the cotton threads are just kind of laying in the trough. And here you can see that they lead to the individual bearings. It's as simple as it gets. Okay, we got all the strings out. Let's go ahead and pull that trough off. And that reveals the main crankshaft, let's call it, drive shaft. I don't know what you want. That runs the entire length of the tone generator that is responsible for driving all of the tone generator tone wheels. On the main drive shaft, you have a gear that drives a corresponding gear that drives two tone wheels. So each pair of tone wheels is driven by a single gear. Also notice that there's a spring clutch on the tone wheel so that if it meets any resistance, all the rest of the tone wheels will keep on going. But that one Here I've got the tone generator running. You can see that the, there is a spring connector that drives the main shaft and the motor that isolates it from misalignment. And there we go, each set of tone wheels has a gear driving it. And you can see there are the pickups. 
Here is the set screw in the collar that holds the rod in place. Rod goes through here, and there is where the pickup is made. see exactly what would happen if somebody were to run his pickup rod into the tone wheel. Let's go ahead and push pickup. It's hard to make this thing make contact without it stopping rotating. Now, I've already done this about 20 dozen times while not filming. Let's see what happens on the other pickup rod. Now, that one's real hard to make contact without it stopping. It seems to want to stop a whole lot easier than the other one. Okay, let's look at the lobes of these tone wheels. Maybe hard to see, but the paint has been scraped off. Whether those lobes are physically smaller now, my guess is no. Uh, I have this sitting on a Formica tabletop, and there's no evidence of any metal shavings down there. I would say that all this did was polished the tips. Same thing with the one that has more lobes on it. Even looking at it under a magnifying glass, I can't see any appreciable wear on the tips of those cam lobes. You will notice that even on cam lobes that we haven't touched, the orange paint seems to be very thin or missing on the tips of these cam lobes. So, based on my observation on this particular tone wheel generator, I can see that no damage is caused by the pickup rods. Even the tips of the pickup rods don't appear to have any damage to them.